Welcome to the Chateau La Roche, better known as the Loveland Castle or Harry's Castle. This castle was built by hand by one man. His name is Sir Harry Andrews. Sir Harry started our organization, the Knights of the Golden Trail, in 1927. The boys that he had out here, they were scout groups and, and Sunday school pupils. They got together and started the KOGT, the Knights of the Golden Trail. They had two old army tents that they wore out. So Harry asked the boys, if, if you gather me stones, I'll build you two rock tents, which started the two towers behind me on my right. Harry started building in 1929. He worked on the castle for almost 52 years. He died in 1981 at the age of 91, and he was still working on the castle. Upon Harry's death, he gave the castle to the same organization he built the castle for, the Knights of the Golden Trail. The Golden Trail being the Ten Commandments. He was one of the world's authorities on medieval architecture and castles. Uh, he studied medieval architecture. He could write, read, and speak seven languages fluently, had several different degrees. Harry was never married. Harry was declared deceased in World War I. He had spinal meningitis or meningitis. He was put in the morgue for several days and they took him out of the morgue. They started to do an autopsy on him. They cut Harry's roof of his mouth and he started to bleed and dead men don't bleed. So they used an experimental drug called adrenaline and put him in a quarantine situation. But by then, they had already told his family that he had passed. So his fiance married uh, a friend of his. The bottom room is a German game room. Then you go up Irish trip stairs into the French ballroom. The French ballroom was designed after the ballroom in Toulouse, France of the Chateau de la Roche, where Harry was stationed in World War I as a nurse and a medic. Then if you look out onto the top deck, it's an English battle deck. Harry wanted us to continue working on the castle. That's why he taught us how to work on the castle. This is the German game room. This also is the first line of defense. On the front door there, that door is made of three layers thick with 2,530 nails, 238 pieces of wood puzzled together and three doors in one. The reason for all the doors is this French cut door. If you want some air in the castle, you can open the top door. At night or when the castle's closed or within, when it's under siege, you close both doors. The only way in or out is through what they call a wicked door. The wicked door is where they got sticking your neck out. If you're a full-size adult, you have to come bend down, come in head first. If you've got a weapon in your hand, you've got to extend a weapon which deems it useless. Then the next line of defense are archer's loops. If you look, the windows in the castle are very narrow. They're tapered. They're very easy for a knight to shoot arrows out. They're very hard for you to shoot arrows in, in and hit anything. Once they clear this room and they take this under seas, you would go upstairs. Them are Irish trip stairs. They're made to make you feel uncomfortable. They're really easy for one person to defend. It's narrow. So only one person at a time can come up them. It's spiraled so that you can't shoot an arrow or sword fight in them. The steps height are all different. The run is all different on them. So it makes you look at your feet. Even though you, though you were born with them at the end of your leg, you lose your feet if you don't pay attention to them on the stairs. You have to put your hands out to the side so you're looking down, holding on to the walls, which seems if you have a sword in your hand makes it useless once again. Then the third level is the English battle deck. The battle deck has a fireplace in it right across from this fireplace. And this is a bell tower. That's where they would pour hot molded lead across the top of anybody trying to knock the doors down. And then when you go out this door, if you turn left, you go through a dry moat, which keeps you under the protection of the walls of the castle while you're mounting and dismounting your horse. And then we have the terrace gardens in the back, which Harry grew vegetables and, and fruits and stuff all year round. And then the great wall below us with the watchtower in it. The wall is amazing in its own right. It's a cantilever wall, so the more pressure you push against it, the more pressure it 
applies to the bottom of the wall. We have a website. It's www.lovelandcastle.com. Thanks for watching us and come down and enjoy the castle and learn about history and medieval architecture. Sir Harry was a school teacher, Sunday school teacher, preacher, professor, an author, a poet, a publicist, a notary public, a typeset, a proofreader, an editor. He worked for Standard Publishing Company in Cincinnati until he retired in May of 55. And Harry moved into the castle and worked on the castle for the remainder of his life. There are 300 nights from the original roster until today. That's in all of the people that we know of that have been knighted in good standings past us, uh, in bad standings, everybody that's been knighted under our organization, the KOGT, the Knights of the Golden Trail. There's about 40 of us active, and anybody can come out and join our organization. You just have to come out, work around the castle. You can't be a knight without working around the castle and, and finding out where you fit in. And then one of the knights says, uh, hey, I'll sponsor you. And you get voted in for being a neophyte. A neophyte is a knight in training, which takes a year probationary period. Or you can be raised up into the knighthood from family members and other people that come out and volunteer. You have pages and squires, and then they become knights when they get old enough to become a knight.